Good evening, good evening. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Good evening, good evening. Yes, you've made it to the city. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands with me. Yeah, yeah. Come on, clap your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as you come in, please do me a favor. Tag somebody. Amen. Welcome them to the city. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Give them the praise. Hallelujah. Now, don't just be here. Say something. Let me know you're here. Say good evening. How you doing? We come to give God praise. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy to be praised. How many of y'all know he's worthy? Yes, he is. We give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift him high. He's worthy, y'all, on the good days and on the bad days. In the happy times and in the sad times, he's still worthy to be praised. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, you all. I'm excited to be with you this evening. Hallelujah. Come on, tell the Lord hallelujah. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Tell him how much you thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. We love you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Well, welcome to Core Church. Amen. This is our, what we call, midweek, our terrific Tuesday. Amen. And we are just excited to be with you on this evening. Amen. Well, you know what? We've got an exciting little topic tonight. Amen. Amen. I feel real qualified. Amen. To do this topic tonight. I promise y'all, I feel like I have a doctoral degree. Hallelujah. And our topic tonight, I am, amen. I got an advanced degree in it. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about sin. Amen. I know some of y'all may not know a whole lot about sin because I know some of y'all, you know, you just you know, always been holy, holy, and never roll it, roll it. Amen. You just holy, holy, and that's okay. That's all right. But I, I want to help somebody tonight. I want to encourage someone tonight. I want to edify and empower someone tonight. So if you just hang in with me for just a few minutes, I promise you we ain't going to keep you long. We're going to keep you all night. But I'd love for you to just stay with us for the duration of our Terrific Tuesday Word Study Night here at the core at City of Refuge Empowerment Church. Now, do me a favor. Tag somebody, share this. Don't do a watch party. Amen. Because see, the catch is if they do a comment in it, we're not going to see what the comment is. And I want your comments. I welcome your comments. So I'm asking you, do me a favor. Comment. Say I'm here. Say I made it out. Amen. God bless you, Brother Franklin. Amen. Thank you, Sister Carolyn. Amen. Sister Yvonne. Wendell. Amen. Wendell, you cook food up north on the East Coast and you do not send any down here. We're going to have to be praying for you. Praise God. Amen. So, but we're just glad. Amen. Hey, saying, God bless you, my good friend from Mount Vernon. Look, y'all do me a favor. Tag somebody. But speak, speak to us, comment. And when we're doing our study tonight, if you got something, hey, hey, tag, say, say amen. Yes, Lord. Or, or say something. Amen. I love you all. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And then we're going straight to the word of God. Amen. Father God, we love you tonight. We thank you tonight. And we do welcome you, God, into this 
mm, experience, God, that we're having, God. There are more than two or three of us gathered together in your name. So, God, we say, have your way. Lord, forgive us and cleanse our hearts and our minds of anything that has been unlike you, God, and help us, God, to represent you well. Help us, God, to speak as the oracles of God. Father God, help us, God, to be a blessing to those that are hearing. And let your word, God, that goes forth tonight, let it fall on good ground. And now, God, we lift up, God, those that are going through any type of bereavement, any type of sickness, any type of depression, any type of hurt, any type of pain. And God, we lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus, God. We know who you are. And we know what you can do. And you are the Romans 8.28 God that causes all things to work together for good. So God, I thank you that no matter what my brothers and sisters are going through, God, you have a way to come up in there and God, turn it and work it out for good. We thank you that you are the Ephesians 3 and 20, God. That hallelujah, you do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power, the faith, God, that we release. So tonight, God, we release our faith, God. Saying hallelujah, thank you for being a healer. Thank you for being a deliverer. Thank you for being a keeper. Thank you for being our all in all. There's nothing that we can need or even desire that we cannot just find in you, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God, that even in this country that we live in, God, there's so much trouble and, and, and we're living in crazy times, God. But Father God, even the spirit of racism that has been ugly and prevalent for so many so many decades, God, centuries, God. Father God, we pray, God, now in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus be applied. Hallelujah. And God, that it would be cut off from the head. It would wither up and die in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you that you are the John 10 and 10, God. Hallelujah. That you've come that we may have life and we may have it more abundantly. So we receive that abundant life and we thank you for it, God. Father God, even tonight, God, the petitions, the concerns that are on the hearts of these your people meet the needs and if they delight themselves in you give them even the desires of their heart we thank you for it now and we bless you in jesus name hallelujah yeah yeah lord thank you jesus god bless you love you nikki thank you jesus hallelujah god bless you my son alex amen hey god bless you sister rita we speak healing in jesus name in jesus name we speak healing and it is so hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah Hallelujah, come on, say one to welcome, just one time, y'all, come on, into this place, mm. hallelujah, yeah, yeah, welcome into this broken vessel, uh, for you desire to abide in the praises of your people, that's why we praise you, God. So, God, we lift up our hands. Thank you, Jesus. As we lift our hearts, uh, yeah. As we offer up mm, this praise unto mm, your name. <laughs> he is worthy, y'all, to be praised. Amen. So, I just challenge you to, no matter what you're going through, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, praise your way through. Amen. Through sickness, praise your way through. Through depression, praise your way through. Or there ought to be something turning and churning down on the inside of you in your spirit, God. Let it turn. Hallelujah. Amen. And encourage yourself in the Lord. If you have to be like David, pat your own self on the back. Tell yourself, yes, I can. Yes, I will. Amen. Speak of affirmations. Amen. I am blessed. I am the righteousness of God. I am delivered. I am set free. I am above only and not beneath. I am blessed and not cursed. Hallelujah. I am the lender and not the borrower. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Say, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. We offer up this praise unto your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We offer up uh, this praise unto your name. Well, 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 again, good evening. I'm so happy that you are here with us on this evening. And we are excited about what God is about to say and what God is about to do. Because we're just believing that whatever it is that we say, it's the word of God. I don't want to say it if it ain't God's word. Amen? Listen, I want to talk with you all tonight about a subject, sin. 
And like I said, I think at the beginning, hope you're hanging in with me. Don't don't leave me now. Because if I step on your toes, hey, hey, brother Tony, or if I come to your front door and, and you know, hang on not, you just kick it in. Amen. Just say, it is what it is. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody pointing fingers. Amen. Because you know what? None of us have a right or reason to point a finger. You without sin, pick up and cast the first stone. We all got issues. We all got problems. And that's why I feel like I got a doctorate degree. Amen. In the subject we're talking about tonight, sin. Amen. I want, the, But this is what God gave me. This is the, the twist story or about it. Choices and decisions, not mistakes. I'll say it again. Choices and decisions, not mistakes. So a lot of times we do things in life and we want to make excuses Amen. And it goes all the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve. Amen. Instead of, you know, Adam just saying, you know, look, God, you put me in charge. I kind of dropped the ball. You know, I, 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 this my, my little wife. I should have put in check and told her, you know, we can't do that. But you know what I did? Uh, this woman you gave me. Uh, stop. Stop. You travel on through the Old Testament. Amen. Look at Saul. Amen. Samuel talking to Saul says, God says, kill everything. Destroy everything. Samuel come to do a check to see, hey, you got it together? Amen. Wait, 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 wait. What is that I hear in the background? Wait a minute. Why do I hear sheep in the background if God says, kill everything, destroy everything? Well, you know, the people. Well, it's not the people. Saul, you in charge. You the king. You running this thing. How are you going to make excuses? Listen, let me tell y'all something. A lot of times in our lives, we don't like to take responsibility. Amen. For our actions. But I just want to help us tonight and say, we just need to take responsibilities. Because here's the beautiful thing. And I'm going to go to the end and come back to the beginning. Here's the beautiful thing. Just be like David in Psalm. Let me just read it to you. Be like David in Psalm 51, and I'm going to tell you why. Listen, listen to David, and this is what I want you to practice being like. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according unto the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Amen. I got some. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. I got that too. Amen. And cleanse me from uh, my sin. Uh, for I acknowledge, somebody say, I acknowledge, uh-huh. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever in my face. Mm. Against you, God, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. Amen. Behold, mm, I've been messed up from the floor since I got here. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, Lord, you desire truth. Amen. In the inward parts and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. I need to get the word in me. Amen. I'm trying to get the word deep down in my spirit, man. Amen. It says, purge me with hyssop and I should be clean. Wash me and I should be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean higher, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let me tell you all something. We've all sinned. I, I've sinned. But one thing that I'm so grateful for is for God's gift of grace and mercy. Amen. That I did not have to die in sin. I didn't have to wallow or live in sin without the opportunity to repent and come out. Ah, amen. So I said, well, it's supposed to stumble again. And I thank God that the blood uh, never loses its power. Amen. So that means that it can go to the highest mountain, to the lowest valley. Amen. And the blood still works. And I thank God for the blood because the blood covers my yesterday. It covers my today. And thank you, Jesus. It's got my tomorrow already in check. So tonight I want to talk with us for just a few minutes about sin. Choices and decisions, not mistakes. Uh, Joshua 24 and 15 Listen to what Joshua is saying to the people. God bless you all tonight. And I pray that somebody's being blessed. Amen. Don't forget to share. Amen. Listen, <clears throat> Joshua tells the people, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, look what it says, choose you this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What I'm trying to get you to understand is this. Sin is a choice. I'll say it again. Sin is a choice. You choose to sin. Sin does not just happen. No. You choose. It's a choice. Righteousness, hallelujah, is a better choice. Yes, you've got before you to choose sin or you can choose what? Righteousness. That's on you. Amen. Now, 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 let me help you understand something. Let me let me share with you the sin process. Amen. There is a process. James 1, amen, 14, 15. Watch this thing. James 1, 14, 15 says, but every man, somebody type that for me, James 1, 14 and 15. Listen, James 1, 14 and 15. But every man, every, every man, it includes woman, amen. Thank you. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Ugh. Uh -huh. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Now, now, now this is the, listen, we all have a sin nature. That, that, that's the problem. Because of the fall, because of what happened with Adam, we all have a sin nature. God bless you, my pal Val. Amen. God bless you. We all have a sin nature. Amen. God bless you, Sister Betts. Listen, and here's the, here's the issue. First John really just knocks us in the head. The first John 1, 8 through 10 says, if we say that we have no sin, watch this thing, we deceive ourselves. And the truth of the word of God is really not in us. Amen. That's why I said I got a doctrine in this thing. Yes. Have I seen? Oh, yes, I have. You mean you sin since you've been saved? Yes, I have. Amen. And I'll and you know what I've had to do? I've had to repent. I just had to turn back to God. I said, God, look, I, my attitude, Lord, is not in check. My attitude is not like it should be. Amen. My disposition, God, is not holy today. I, I need your help, God. I need the Holy Ghost to stir something up in me to make me to make me better. Amen. Since I've been saved. Listen, but listen, it said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Watch this thing now. But if we confess our sins, huh? Talk to God about this thing. That's what God says. The Bible says that he, God, is faithful, oh Lord, and just to forgive our sins mm -hmm, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if we say that we've not sinned, then we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, keep saying it. Keep talking about you ain't you ain't never seen. Keep saying you don't have it. You you got it all together. No 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 no. Listen, we all got issues. We all got some problems. Amen. Iniquity. Listen, <clears throat> iniquity is. Here's the definition for iniquity. Iniquity is the propensity to sin. That means that there's something on the inside of you. You don't have to answer it, but it's there because of your flesh nature. Amen. The Bible says, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. There's something in my flesh nature, not your spirit that's been born again. Amen. But in my flesh that dwelleth no good thing. So there is iniquity. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. Residing in my flesh. Amen. In my members. What's this thing? But Psalm 66, 18 tells me something. Iniquity can be ignored. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord is not listening to me. So if I pay attention to iniquity, then guess God's not listening to because I you can't serve two masters. Joshua told you at the beginning, make you a choice. So so here, watch this thing. Because of the iniquity, watch what happens. Lust comes. Lust is a desire. Amen. And, and lust is not always just lust is not just sexual. You can lust after a car, you can lust after a house. You can lust after a job. You can lust after money. Amen. You can lust after food. Watch this thing. But watch this thing. Lust entertain makes brings on the enticement. Should have been ignored. Now watch this thing. When something comes before you, amen. God bless you, Franklin. When something comes before you, you have a choice. Just because something evil is in front of you does not make you the sinner. 
does not cause you to sin because it is there. There's a little process that takes place. And this is where you've got to learn how to take control over life. And sometimes we drop the ball. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we just don't do it right. Amen. Amen. Our humanity beats our divinity. But we got to rise up and cause our divinity, amen, because we've been created in his image and we're born again now. Our divinity has got to defeat our humanity. Yes, we are spiritual beings just having look, a little earthly experience. Amen. So, so the lust begins to be entertained, should have been ignored. Watch it. That's how enticement comes. Now, here's the pitch. When lust is embraced, that's when sin occurs. When that thing that is in front of you that is not God, not of God, and you know it's not God, and you know it's not of God, but you begin to embrace it. It can be an attitude. It can be a disposition. It can be an action. Listen, I'm not even supposed to get into specific. Somebody say, what about this thing? And this? And see, that's one of the problems with, with church folk. See, what, what the problem is this. We will get okay in one area, and then we find somebody that's struggling in another area, and we like to highlight what they're struggling about. No, you're all struggling with something. So I'm not supposed to go down your street trying to know what you're struggling. You know your struggle. You know what you're dealing with. You know the thing that you know makes you uncomfortable. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, that's sin. If it makes you uncomfortable and you're born again, it is sin. Just that simple. When you know something is not of God and you embrace it, that's when sin occurs. When you know something is not of God and you embrace it, that is sin. Whether it's an action, an activity, an attitude, I'll say it again. Whether it is an action, whether it is activity, or whether it's an attitude, it is sin. Some folk in the church is mean, just hateful. That's sin. Why are you talking about somebody being drunker than, than Cooter Brown, but you're mean? You're sinful just at you. Look, the Bible says not to be drunk. The Bible also says not to be a tailbearer. And you messy. Uh, I said I wasn't going down these streets. But you got to understand something. Listen, we all have things that we know is sin for us. Here's the catch. Don't embrace it. Mm. See it and run. See it and look the other way. See it and rebuke it. Ah, yes. That's what that's what we got to do. Hey, Kenya, God bless you. My sister from Mississippi. Listen, we've got to embrace it. I mean, so so understand this. We, we, lust, embrace is when, when sin occurs, and then sin acted upon is what yields death. That that's how death comes when we act on it. Stop acting on it. Stop embracing it. Oh my God. Listen. Continual sin becomes a habit. If you keep doing something over and over and over, it becomes a habit. Now watch this thing. Here, here, here's the real deal. I want to talk to you about seeds for just a moment. Seeds. S-E-E-D-S. -E -E seeds. Sin is like a seed. And the manifestation is the works of the flesh. I, I, yeah, I'll just go there. It's not even in my notes. Amen. I say the manifestation of it. Amen. Is, amen, like the works of the flesh. L listen to this. Oh, Jesus. Listen, Galatians. I'm in Galatians 5. Uh, I wasn't going there. Listen. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Sin is like a seed. If you don't sow it, it can't come up. If you don't put it in the ground, it can't come up. Did are y'all Are y'all with me? I'm not, I said sin is like a seed. So if you ignore the seed, it can't manifest. If you rebuke the seed, it can't manifest. If you refuse to embrace the seed and plant it, it can't manifest. Ha! Ah, but what happens is this. When you embrace it, when you plant it, that's when you begin to see, ah, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. 
of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, see, you got stuff being made manifest is because you planted the wrong seed. Amen. Am I guilty? Oh, yes, I am. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I am. But I thank God for his blood. I thank God for forgiving me. Amen. Oh, I've been down them streets. I, yes, I look, I didn't been down them streets. Hallelujah. But I thank God that he spared me and brought me out of darkness into his what? Marvelous light. Mm. Watch this thing. But righteousness also is like a seed. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody right now. I said sin is like a seed and the manifestation of the works of the flesh. Ah, but righteousness, uh-huh. Righteousness is just like a seed as well. I want to embrace righteousness. I want to embrace godliness. I want to embrace holiness. Watch this thing. It's just like a seed too. And when it is planted, the manifestation is the fruit of the spirit. Yes. That, listen, let me tell you something. That, that's why you got what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control, uh-huh. Against such there is no law. Self-control. You know, I talk about self-control all the time. Some, see, sometimes we react instead of responding. Stop reacting and learn to respond. Oh, I ain't gonna call your name out, bro. Amen. You know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. Yeah. Sitting at your dining room table. Amen. Stop reacting. Learn to respond. Sit down and just take a chill pill. Think about it for a minute. Don't just go off on the deep end. Amen. Because what happens is that when we react, it usually takes us to the place of sin. Yes, when we react, it takes us to the place of sin. But when we learn to respond, God has the opportunity to develop and to deposit, excuse me, wisdom. And then we have a better way of responding versus reacting. I'm trying to help somebody up in here. Are y'all hearing me? With all the craziness that has been going on, God dropped, amen, a scripture in my spirit. You know what he says? Be angry and sin not. I said again, he says, be angry and sin not. That means the stuff that has taken place, the, the, the loss of a man whose life never should have been lost. Amen. Be angry, but don't sin. There is a better way to get justice. There is a better way, amen, to make things right. And now we've got to take the catalyst of this moment, y'all, amen, and make things right. Did y'all hear me? Amen. Be angry and sin not. I'm going to make things right, but I don't have to make it right by, by doing like the devil. John 10 and 10. Amen. Stealing, killing, and destroying. That, that's the works of the devil. He's not my daddy. Did, did y'all hear me? I said the devil is not my daddy. Since the devil is not my dad, I don't have to be like him. I don't have his DNA. Amen. So I will not steal. I will not kill. I will not destroy. Amen. But my daddy says he's come. Amen. I'm operating like God. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. All I'm seeking is abundant life. That means I'm going to seek fair life. I'm going to speak, speak equitable life. Amen. I'm going to seek those. Y'all ain't hearing me. Listen, y'all. When you have a seed, I told you you got two seeds. You can either choose the seed of sin or the seed of righteousness. Let me show you the process of a seed. When you get a seed, I mean, you put that seed in the ground and you water it. How do I water a seed? Let me tell you one way. Words. I mean, Proverbs says you got the power of life and death in your tongue. Words. What are you saying? I mean, what are you really saying? I mean, you've got life and death in your tongue. God gave you that authority, that power. And see, one of the things that we do is we find ourselves speaking negative over our own situation. Negative or doubt over our own circumstances. Stop it. Speak your way out of negative places. Speak your way out of crazy situations. When you find yourself in a place or a situation that you know is not godly and you know you should not be, speak your way out of it. Ah, yeah. Then what we do, what's this thing? Then not only are seeds watered, but they're cultivated as the plants come up. That's our actions, what we do. As you see stuff coming up, if you see weeds coming up, get that, get that crap out your garden. 
No. You know, and, and there are times, y'all, that I honestly, I have asked God to say, God, I know sometimes we plant seeds and some of them come up and some of them don't. God, I say, look, I'm speaking crop failure to this because I, I, I sold some stuff I shouldn't have sold. I embraced some stuff I shouldn't have embraced. I did some stuff I shouldn't have done. I said some stuff, God, I shouldn't have said. Mm. Because here's the problem. After seeds are watered, after they're cultivated, then comes the manifestation, which are the results. Mm. Galatians 6.29 is true. What you sow, you'll reap. 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 And let me tell y'all something. That is the thing that God put in my face, amen, to help me when I was trying to go like, God, why am I in this dark place? God, why am I in this crazy situation? God, why is everything falling apart? And you know what God told me? He said, whatsoever man so of that shall he also reap. Ah, I told y'all I had sinned. I told y'all I had messed up, amen. I told y'all I, I dropped the ball, Amen. And you know what God told me? He told me, he told me, he says, whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. So that means that since I've sown some negative seeds, amen, sin seeds, I've embraced sin, then guess what? I'm going to reap the results of what I've sown. Mm. So now I've got to learn how to stop embracing sin, amen, and embrace righteousness. I told you all it's a choice. Sin does not just happen. It is a choice. We make choices and decisions every day. And, and another thing that God has blessed and shown me is this. The choices and decisions that we make, they don't just affect you. They affect anything and anybody that is connected to you. Amen. For Watch this thing. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, here's the problem. If you're trying to walk together, amen, and now all of a sudden you on a downward slope because of a choice or a decision, what you think is going to happen to that that's connected to you? It's going down too. Oh, it's not just you. So when you make a choice or you make a decision, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're saying. Think about where you're going. Think about, uh, amen. Think about consequence. Amen. Righteous works are rewarded. Now, here's the catch. When you are really a truly a child of God, mm, you don't do righteous works for the reward. You just do it because you love him. Ah, oh, say amen, somebody. Amen. You know why I do righteous works? Because I love him. Amen. I'm not trying to get nothing from him. Amen. It's because I do what? I love him. Now, let's talk about the sin thing. Isaiah 10 and 27. Isaiah 10 and 27. We talk about the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you, sister. Amen. Uh, amen. <laughs> She's running in late. She told me she lifted her finger up. Well, God bless you. You made it. Isaiah 10 and 27. Listen, <clears throat> the Bible says that it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off that neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. <clears throat> now, I want you to understand something about the anointing of God. When it comes to sin, the anointing is the thing that removes or takes sin away. And you've got to understand you need the anointing in your life. <clears throat> I said it again. You need the, somebody say, I need the anointing. Somebody just type it. I need, what? The anointing. Amen. I need, I need the anointing. Amen. First of all, the burden remover. Sin, you all, is a burden. Yes, it is. But God says, I'll carry it. See, you've got to understand, when Jesus came, he came, the Bible says, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their what? Sins. <clears throat> That's what he did. When Jesus came and went to Calvary, do you know what... <clears throat> Do you really know what was being nailed on the cross? I'll help you. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, <clears throat> the works of the flesh, sin was being nailed to the cross. 
Because the Bible, listen, you got to pay. I mean, there's a price. And he came to pay what? The price. So understand, first of all, the anointing. Listen, when, it, when you say the anointing, I mean, basically you're talking about Christ. Because Christ is the anointed one and his anointing. So when you look at Jesus, he's come, listen, to remove, first of all, the burden of sin. I mean, then there's a yoke removing and destroying that comes because of the anointing. There is a yoke removing and destroying. <clears throat> let, let me help somebody. Continual sin is habit forming and it controls you. I, I, I want to help somebody real quick. Let me let me pull this out and get this thing. Yeah, this I'm gonna use this. I'll say it again. Continual sin is habit forming and it controls you. Amen. Watch this thing. You know how they have oxen and they have horses? And, and what you saying? And they, they, they do this. I mean, to do what? To control them. I mean, it's all up to, to their neck. And it controls what? Where they can go or where they what? Can't go. I mean, oxen, they, they're yoked. I mean, and it's all around their neck. I mean, and it, on their shoulders. But watch what he says. He says that the burden mm, shall be taken off that shoulder and the yoke from off your what? Off your neck. Amen. And the yoke or the thing that controlled you. The thing that made you do this and do that. Amen. Shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What's this thing though? So, so what happens is that continual sin is habit forming and it controls you. You get the what you call the can't help it. But the truth of the matter is you really can. Ah, I'm helping somebody right now. Uh, uh -huh, I'm helping somebody right now. I'll say it again. You get what you call the. I, well, I, I just couldn't help myself. Yes, you could. It was a choice and a decision. Ain't no mistake. I said, yes, you could. You just didn't want to. <clears throat> Can we tell the truth, y'all? Can we just be honest tonight? Come on, y'all. You know we didn't. We, we didn't did stuff that we knew was wrong, but we just did it because we wanted to do it. I mean. <clears throat> You didn't mistakenly miss that T. You just didn't want to cross it. You didn't mistakenly not die that I. You just refused to die. I don't want to die that I. I ain't dying that I. I mean, you refuse to forgive somebody. I mean, you refuse to get stuff right with somebody. I mean, you refuse to refrain your mouth from saying something about somebody. You refuse to stop gossiping. You refuse to stop. And I help. I, I, I'm trying to help you. Listen, you have a choice you always have a choice and the reason that you have a choice is because of the presence of god god you if you are born again amen god's spirit resides within you and you have a choice but here's the problem it's your mind your mind has been trained to think that you have no choice but you really do i'll say it again your mind has anybody, can y'all just wave at me? Has anybody ever just felt like you were stuck? Please help me, somebody. Make sure I'm not by myself. So let me see a heart or, or a wave or something. Anybody ever felt like you were stuck? You were just there and you couldn't do anything about it? You, you couldn't change? You couldn't be who you really wanted to be or who you were supposed to be? Amen? Watch this thing. Romans 12 gives us the answer. Romans 12 and 2, it says... Don't be conformed or don't be made like this world, but be you transformed or be you changed by the renewing. You got to change your mind, your stinking thinking. Amen. Even to the point of depression, even to the point of low self-esteem, that, that's sin. God didn't call you to low dep to depression. God did not call you, amen, to low self-esteem. Cut up out of that. Amen. It says, be you changed or transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind in order that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will or desire of God. You got to change and you can change when you change your mind. How do I change my mind? Meditate on his word. Read his word. I thank God my sister. You know, my sister, she talks about how sometimes she'll just allow the spirit to lead. She'll just open a Bible and start reading. Hallelujah. The spirit knows what you're doing. 
and he'll guide you and direct you to the right place in God's word that will empower you, that will edify you, that will strengthen you. Amen. So you got to read God's word, get God's word in you, change your mind, listen, change your environment. Amen. I'm not telling you what to listen to on the radio or what not to listen to on the radio, but I am going to tell you this, whatever it is that you listen to on the radio, it does affect your mind. Amen. It gets in your mind. And when, and when it's not turned on, you can still hear it playing in your mind. I know I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. So sometimes what you need to do is you need to, you need to govern. You need to be in charge of what's in your mind. Ah, of what's affecting your mind. Of what's coming in the ear gates. Of what's coming in the eye gates. You need to be in charge. Amen. And there are times that you need to change what you are allowing yourself to be exposed to. Sometimes you're exposed to stuff that's negative, And before you know it, you find yourself embracing something that is not God. And the catch is this. Don't tell me, oh, I don't know how I got here. You do know how you got there. You made a choice and a decision not to ignore, not to negate, not to push away from something that was not of God. Philippians tells you, says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind, what mind? The same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Listen, y'all, I'm trying to help somebody. Nobody can force you to sin. Mm. I said again, nobody can force you to sin. But you've got to check ah, that iniquity, that propensity to sin. I told you what, that's what iniquity is. The propensity to sin. The, the ability to sin. You've got to check that iniquity that is within you and tell yourself no. And believe the no. Uh-huh. Don't just be talking. Don't be just saying words. I said, tell yourself no. And then do what? Believe the no. Yes. The, the, listen, you got things that are choices. Murder is not a mistake. It's a choice. Adultery is not a mistake. It's a choice. Lying is not a mistake. It's a choice. I, I, I'm trying to help somebody. These are choices. And you've got to understand something, y'all. The choices that you make today, they, they, they make a difference in your tomorrow. Yes. And, and, and so, so, so understand this. I almost finished, y'all. Sin does not promote contentment, happiness, peace, or comfort. But you know what it does? It promotes fear, anxiety, unhealthy stress. That's what sin promotes. Proverbs 28 is a, oh God, this is a good scripture to, to talk about just that. And I'm almost finished. Here we go. Proverbs 21, 28 and 1, it says that the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. What are you doing? Running a standing. Yeah, what are you doing? Running or standing? See, see, here's the problem. Sin will cause you to run when ain't nobody even chasing you. Sin will cause you to be in fear when ain't nothing even fits to happen. So you've already made, see, the, the problem is you've already made the wrong choice and the wrong decision. And so now you're scared of the manifestation. Uh-huh. Listen, you have a sin conscious and you have God's Holy Spirit, which is his word. Which are you making a choice to obey? Yes, you have a sin conscious. Yeah, it, it, there, there are things that you just ain't going to say and ain't going to do in front of some people. Why? Because you're uncomfortable. It's sin. That's why you won't say it or do it. Amen. God bless your apostle uh, McGee. Amen. God bless you. Prophetess, excuse me, prophetess McGee. Listen, if you are not... If you are not going to make the choice to live in righteousness and holiness, learn to take responsibility. It is what it is. If, if you're living in sin, just say, well, I'm in sin. But there is a way out. Amen. You don't have to stay there. Amen. God has provided, and I thank God for him. 
God has provided a rescue boat for all of us. God has provided a way out for all of us. Amen. The Bible said, and it will say it again, for all have sinned and done what? Come short of the glory of God. So here's the deal. We've all sinned. We've all messed up. We've all made wrong choices. Amen. I call them poor choices and bad decisions. That's what they are. Poor choices and bad decisions. We've all done it. We've done it in relationships. We've done it in our mindset. We've done it in our actions. Amen. We've done it with our beliefs. Amen. And here's the catch. There is a way out though. Amen. First of all, just acknowledge, say, you know what? It's me. I made a mistake. Uh, not a mistake. I made a, bad, a poor choice and a bad decision. Amen. Learn responsibility. And when we can learn responsibility, then we're in a place for deliverance. Amen. What did David say in Psalm 51? Created me a clean heart. It was 